Hi, welcome to my channel. My name is Jeffrey. Today I'm going to be talking to you guys about the action potential and the channels that are affecting this action potential. Okay, so let's get started. First, we're looking at an action potential graph. The action potential is labeled in black. You can see that right here. And it essentially has um, seven parts. So the first part right here is a graded potential. Um, you can see that it's it follows a more linear path and that reaches a certain threshold point. That threshold point is about negative 50 millivolts where it just jumps from 0.2 to 4 and um, point three is characterized as your uh, depolarization, your rapid depolarization as your voltage gated sodium channels open. So you can see your, your sodium channels right here. Um, essentially this graded part um, is not really voltage gated. Once you reach that threshold at point two, that's when all your voltage gated channels open. Before that, um, it's more so other channels that are not voltage um, dependent, so more voltage independent channels. And then at point four, you can see your peak of your action potential that actually correlates with the peak of the Na plus conductance. That's the conductance essentially is going to be the proportion of channels that are going to be open. So right here, you can see that there's not a lot of channels that are open. And then at the peaks, all of the channels are open. Okay. And then at point five, you can see your hyperpolarization as you go down. And then at point six, you're going to see your refractory period right here. And then at point seven, you return back to your resting membrane potential, which is about negative 60, negative 70 millivolts. Okay. And then um, uh, just for reference, the peak is going to be about plus 20 millivolts. And uh, at point two, the threshold, that's going to be about negative 50 millivolts. All right. So let's move on to the uh, actual Na plus and K plus channels. Um, actually, one point that I wanted to touch on before that was that um, you can see that the K plus channels, um, both of these channels are voltage dependent. Um, so when they open right here, you can see this voltage de dependency right here. This is that voltage dependency. But you can take a look at the correlation here. Um, the Sodium channels actually look like the action potential itself. So as the membrane voltage increases on the action potential graph, you can see the same correlation with the sodium channels. And then at point four, it has that little action potential part. And then um, you can see that the potassium channels actually lag behind, even though they are also voltage dependent. So there's a bit of a time lag for the potassium channels. So you can see that the uh, at point one right here, that's when the voltage starts increasing, but is it until right about here at point two when the potassium channels actually start to open? And that's extremely important later on. Okay, so let's just touch on a little bit your uh, sodium and potassium channels during the action potential and what really happens. Okay, so this is going to be at point A, which correlates right here. Um, this is pretty much your uh, resting membrane potential, and then right here you get your graded potentials to point B, and point B is going to be, uh, once you reach that threshold right there, you're going to have that action potential, that rapid depolarization, and that's point B correlated right here. So right here we can see that there are potassium leak channels. These channels are going to be always open. They're, going, they're, they're always going to be open, and um, your uh, sodium channels are not going to always be open. And at one point, uh, at point B, that's when you reach your threshold, that's when your, uh, 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 your sodium channels open and you get this uh, rapid influx. Because if you remember uh, about the sodium potassium ATPase pump, it essentially pumps your sodium outside of the cell and your potassium inside of the cell. Okay, so you have a much higher concentrations of sodium outside of the cell, and then you have a much higher concentration of potassium inside of the cell. Okay, so once these channels open, potassium, uh, sodium is going to obviously rush in very quickly. Um, and since the membrane voltage is increasing here by a lot, uh, if you remember from this graph, it's still, the potassium channels are still voltage dependent. So they're going to have a little bit of a bigger flow here. 
um, but remember there's still that time delay so it's not going to actually uh, increase to a very large point up until point C here and that correlates with your hyperpolarization so you can see as um, as the uh, at the peak of the action potential remember from the graph here that um, it starts to level for sodium so you can see here that there's going to be this H gate here that's starting to close and as a result you're going to have less sodium rushing into the cell and you have more potassium leaving the cell because of the uh, potassium uh, the voltage gated potassium channels and as potassium leaves the cell then your cell is going to become more hyperpolarized which is more negative okay and at the final point right here, you can see for uh, for D here, you can see that the potassium uh, channels are still going to have a little bit more than they normally do in terms of the resting membrane potential, and that's because of that time lag. If you look here, you can see that the potassium channels are still open, even though the membrane voltage has gotten down to its resting membrane potential. And as these potassium ions keep leaking out, then you can see that you're going to have a more negative um, resting membrane potential, at least for a little bit until these potassium channels um, uh, are, go back to the original equilibrium, which is about the um, negative 60, negative 70 millivolts. Okay, so um, if we look back on this, uh, and you're wondering why necessarily why the um, the voltage of the membrane changes <clears throat> as these sodium and potassium channels open. Uh, if we look back to the Nernst equation, um, your, uh, your equilibrium potentials for your sodium is plus 60. So as your sodium channels open, then you're going to try to, uh, the, cell, the membrane um, voltage actually gets closer to plus 60. So this is going to be about uh, plus plus 20 millivolts right here. So that's a lot closer to plus 60 than it was before over here, which was you know around negative uh, 60, negative 70, okay? And then your potassium is going to be uh, negative 83. So as you see, the as the potassium channels open, they correlate right here. You can see the membrane uh, voltage going down. And uh, I wrote here that uh, voltage of the membrane is dependent on the proportion of ions inside of the cell. So um, if you just remember, uh, as your, uh, so for right here, for example, as your, um, as your sodium channels open, you have a very high sodium concentration outside of the cell and it's just rushing into the cell. And as a result, you're going to have that membrane potential looking closer to that plus 60, which is the case right here. Okay, um, I'm going to touch on two things right here. So uh, the sodium channel and the potassium channel. Um, uh, I touched on this a little bit right here about the H and M gates. Basically, there's going to be a thing called the activation gate and the inactivation gate. So um, both of these gates have to be open, have to be open, okay? For uh, potassium to go inside of the cell and this is going to be extra extracellularly and this is going to be intracellularly okay and so both of these so this inactivation gate and the activation gate have to be open at the same time in order for potassium to go inside of the cell if you look here um, that's going to be the case you can see that the inactivation gate has a uh, is open is a hundred percent open when it's very very hyperpolarized and then as the um, membrane voltage gets higher, as the potential gets higher, your activation gates start to open, okay? So what you want is that like kind of sweet spot where both of these are going to be open and you're looking at this graph right now and you're like, wait, but it's never gonna be open because even at negative uh, 31, 32 millivolts, it's essentially like, 0.0001% like proportion uh, of the channels that are open. So how do we get this action potential? How do we get this sodium conductance when it's like that? Now, the key thing here is that the inactivation gate has a bit of a time lag. And if we remember from um, the same principle for the potassium channels where there's a time lag here, that's the exact same principle that's affecting the inactivation gates here. So that's also partially why um, 
we want to have that rapid depolarization because if we don't have that rapid depolarization then um, your inactivation gates are, are going to close very uh, relatively quickly so remember that about negative 50 millivolts is where our rapid depolarization happens so um, that means that it's essentially going to plus 20 very quickly so we're going to have about you know 20 percent of our channels open at the same time as 100 percent of the inactive uh, of the activation gates that are open so that leads to um this part of the action potential okay and then if we're looking at the potassium channel here um you can see that the fraction of the gates open, there's going to be very, very little for the potassium channels up until it starts getting extremely depolarized. So then if we look on the graph here, then that correlates, that makes sense because we're trying to restore equilibrium. We're trying to restore this uh, number seven resting membrane potential. So, um, and keep in mind that the potassium channels they hyperpolarize, which means they make your membrane potential more negative. So as more channels open, that's going to lead to a more negative um, membrane voltage, okay, as uh, potassium ions come inside. Now there's two uh, different types. There's one that's called the delayed rectifier, which is voltage and time dependent. This is going to be what you normally see in most cells that have an action potential because you have that time lag and then for the inward rectifying these are going to be in your cardiac cells and things like that and they're only voltage dependent so that means they behave more like a sodium channel in that in that case um, they they don't have this this time lag okay um, yeah so so right here we can see that the H gate is closed and um, so when we get to this rapid, this very depolarized state right here, this very positive charge on our membrane uh, voltage, um, and our inactivation gates are closed and it seems like there's not really that, um, we would have to restore that uh, hyperpolarization uh, before we can actually open these inactivation gates again. And I wrote right here is that um, it resets at negative 60 millivolts. So if you take a look here, um, at about negative 60 millivolts, it actually goes back up. Now, that concept ties into this one right here. So essentially what this means is if you have um, these artificial cells with voltage clamps on them, and I have a stimulus current that goes above my threshold. Now keep in mind my threshold was at negative 50 millivolts. If it goes above that, then I'm going to stimulate an action potential. If I have below that, I'm not going to stimulate an action potential. I'm going to have a graded potential. And that's very common sense. But then you look here and it's multiple um, stimulations that are below the uh, actual threshold potential, but then I have one that's significantly higher than the threshold potential. If you take a look here, this is actually taller than that last one. So um, now I'm like definitely above threshold. I should definitely be seeing action potential, but <clears throat> what I see here is that it's still a graded potential. And the reason for that is because of this H gate right here. It, like my... Um, I have a much more depolarized state. So as a result, and keep in mind that the inactivation gates have a bit of a lag before actually restoring, um, going back or opening up. So if I have all of these stimulations that are going to be depolarizing my cell to about over here, then obviously all of my inactivation gates are going to be closed. And as a result, when I have a stimulus that goes way over, so about past negative 20, my inactivation gates have that time lag. They haven't even restored back to their original, which is the reason why I'm unable to fire another action potential. Um, now, uh, calcium also plays a role into, into these um, voltage gated and also um, just normal sodium channels. So uh, this is our normal physiological condition for calcium. Um, it's two millimolars. And if we go below that, if the, concentr if the extracellular concentration 
uh, of calcium is below that, we have hypocalcemia. And if we have anything above that, it's going to be hypercalcemia. And what this means is just that it's going to change our um, not only our resting membrane potential, but also our probability of opening sodium channels. So as you can see, if we have a hyper, uh, oh, sorry, a hypocalcemic state, it's actually easier to fire an action potential because now our resting membrane um, uh, voltage is going to be about negative 60 millivolts, but it's going to be a lot easier to fire that um, Sorry, this is not our resting membrane voltage. This is just going to be the voltage at which the NA channels are going to be opening. So uh, remember our uh, our resting membrane voltage was about negative 60, negative 70. And as a result of a hypocalcemic state, it's actually going to be much easier to open up these sodium channels, which will depolarize our cell, giving it that positive charge. So it'd be much easier to stimulate this action potential right here. Um, and then similarly, if we're in a hypercalcemic state, then it's going to be much harder to fire off an action potential. And if you look here uh, at the normal physiological condition, negative 50, negative 50 corresponds with our threshold, right? So that makes sense because once we reach that threshold right here, we're going to have that spike and that's what correlates right here with the Na plus channels opening, okay? Hope that makes sense. And then uh, if we're looking at potassium now, if we're looking at hypokalemia versus hyperkalemia, hyperkalemia um, refers to uh, an increased concentration of potassium outside of the cell. And this is going to be a decreased concentration of potassium outside of the cell as well. So any of these states, this hypokalemia, hyperkalemia, um, you know, hypercalcemia, hypocalcemia, then for first the extracellular concentration. That's why I wrote that there. And if I'm in a hyperkalemic state, I'm going to have a more depolarized resting membrane potential. That means I'm going to have a more positive uh, resting membrane potential. And the reason for that ties back to the Nernst equation. So if I have a, a if if you remember from the cell, it's going to have more potassium ions inside of the cell, right? So in a hypercalcemic state, that means I have more potassium outside of the cell. And as a result, that's going to make it easier for me to, um, uh, to, to stimulate an action potential because it makes my entire, um, entire membrane more positive. Because remember, it's it's dependent on the proportion of ions. So if I have more ions out here, when I'm supposed to have more ions in here, that means it's going to stray away from my negative 83, making it more positive. Okay. So in a hyperkalemic state, I'm going to have a more depolarized resting membrane potential, and that uh, you know intuitively you expect easier or faster axe potential firing because it's easier to reach that threshold state and open up your sodium channels uh, leading to that action potential. But what really happens for hyperkalemics is that um, it's actually harder, okay? It's actually much harder for them to fire an action potential. And the reason for that ties back to your inactivation gate because Remember, the inactivation gate only resets at negative, about negative 60 millivolts. And if you have a more depolarized resting membrane potential, that means you're, you're going to be about negative 50, negative 40 millivolts. And that, and that ties into right here. So your inactivation gates are not really going to be open. And as a result, it's actually harder to form an action potential. Now for hypo, hypokalemics, they're going to be in a more hyperpolarized state. So if we look back up here um, to the, the equilibrium potential for a calcium, if I have a hypokalemic state, I have the same concentration of Ks, but now I have much less Ks outside of the cell. So if I look here, um, let's just say I have um, you know, 4 Ks inside of the cell, 
and that's what's normally keeping up my uh, my uh, potential, my my uh... so if we just look here um, and we're looking and we're just thinking like let's just have four potassium ions inside of the cell and normally I have one potassium ion outside of the cell and that um, is the reason why I don't exactly have that negative 83 millivolts because that's assuming if I had all my potassium ions inside of the cell and no potassium ions outside of the cell. But now if we just take away that calcium because we're a hypokalemic state, now all of a sudden we're going to be in a, uh, closer to that negative 83 millivolts because we no longer have those positive ions outside of the cell. So as a result, our resting membrane potential would be about, about closer to that um, EK value, the equilibrium potential value for um, potassium. So that leads to that more hyperpolarized state. As a result, it will be harder to fire an action potential. Hopefully this video has been helpful. If you liked it, like the video. If you want to subscribe and uh, see more content related to this, please do so. Thank you.